Hey y'all, this is KH and Ben, and you're hanging with KH. What are we doing today? We are showing off our camper. We're gonna show off our new ATC 2513 model. Yes. ATC stands for air traffic control, <laughs> but it also stands for aluminum trailer company who made this damn thing. So we're gonna take you around. KH is gonna show you around inside. I'm gonna show you the technical stuff. I'm going to start on the outside, then I'm going to hand the camera off to Karen so she can show you the inside stuff. Yes. You ready to do this? Yes, I am. Let's okay. do it. Guys, I'm going to introduce myself again. My name is Ben, and I'm going to be showing you some of the technical stuff and some of the outside stuff of this aluminum trailer company 2513 model. Uh, we just bought it a couple of weeks ago. We've gone out a couple of times in it, and we've got some great things to talk about about this trailer. We also have some problems, as most of the RV owners out there know, no matter what brand you buy, you're gonna inevitably have a couple of problems right off the bat, and we have had some problems. Now, this is a brand new model, so one of those problems is an engineering model that they were unaware of, that we've made them aware of. We're gonna talk about that later. Let's just show you the outside first and work our way inside. All right, so it's got the battery-powered Lippert Smart Jack, which is really handy. It's a push-button thing. You let it up and down via the touch of a button and it is convenient as heck. It's also really slow. Our model comes with two propane tanks that are underneath that black cover there. I'm not gonna rip it off to show it to you. Uh, it also comes with a generator underneath this cover. So this is the Onan generator that we've uncovered. And that's, this is what sits beneath the ATC aluminum cover. Uh, this is the Onan uh, 5500 uh, gas-powered generator. Uh, by gas, I mean you know, gasoline. So, and it, like I said, it shares the tank with the, uh, with the fuel station on the other side for our toy. So, we'll put the cover back on, show you what it looks like with the cover on now, in case you forgot. Uh, the generator is protected by this uh, uh, aluminum covering, and it's a uh, Cummings generator, and uh, it's the 5.5 kilowatt one. Uh, this is the roadside, right? So this is what, this is, this would be the roadside side that's what they call it. You'll notice I have it hooked up. It's a 50 amp that I've got it hooked up to. And uh, if we follow this back, I'll show you how I'm doing that. So we actually had this 50 amp uh, plug installed by a certified electrician, of course. You should do that. Uh, but we also uh, went out and bought this Hughes uh, Auto Performers Power Watchdog System. It's a 50 amp smart dog surge protector. I like this because it Bluetooths to my phone and I can monitor the energy that's going in, and if there's any anomalies, it notifies me immediately. Now this 2513 uh, is a toy hauler, and as such, uh, we'll show you inside where the toy goes, but this is one of the coolest features about it. So this is a gas pump, right? This, this will pump gas into our toy or anything else that we want, uh, and it's really cool. It's, it's got its own little bay here. It's all uh, sealed off from the rest of the unit, so it shares a uh, gas tank with our generator. The gas tank on this thing is 35 gallons. So they say the generator running with a full load will use about a gallon of gas a day. That's what they're saying. I believe them. Um, <laughs> it works. Uh, we've run the generator for four hours. Uh, we're supposed to break it in, so we've been running it occasionally out here. When we do start the generator, it switches from uh, our cord power to our generator power automatically. It's really nice. So let me show you some of the other storage compartments in here. Uh, this is our front <coughs> curbside storage area. In here I have our uh, water hose for our fresh water hose. I bought a uh, RV water filter that's attached to that. I also have an extension cord and some tools in here, right? Uh, this box right here, behind this box is that gas station that you guys saw just a couple seconds ago. This storage side has actually two bays, and this is where I put the poop hose. I don't know what you call it. Uh, I guess the sewer line or whatever. But when we hook it up or we have to hit it, the dump station, this is the worst part for me. That hose, I got a separate hose to do the flush because I'm kind of a germaphobe, so I like to keep my hose separated. Uh, this one I hook up when I'm doing the sewage, and a lot of times I'm wearing those blue gloves right there when I'm doing it, and I'm touching that hose. I'd prefer not to touch our water hose with those nasty blue gloves, where, knowing where they've been. So, 
that's what it is. This is our septic hose that goes out to uh, some of the sites have septic, as you know, and some of them don't. Some of them have a dump station. And that's what I use when I hit the dump station at the end of the thing. Now I've used the dump station once. I was a newbie, I was really worried about it. It's one of the things that really concerned me was, I'm not really sure how to do it. Uh, a lot of people go into detail about it, but I've never really paid attention. So when we got out there, I had to figure it out on my own. And thankfully, it doesn't take a rocket science to do. The next time we go out, I'm going to take this camera with us. And we're going to record everything we do from setup to tear down in this thing. So if you're a new RV guy, this might be something for you. If you're an old RV person, this might be something for you. So you can laugh at us and all of our mistakes because we're making a ton of them already already have this panel up here is our tankless water heater that's an option that we opted for i'm glad we did because it really works well uh, this is our flush system when we hit the uh, dumping station we plug the hose into here and it'll flush out the uh, black tank and the black tank for you guys that don't know is the tank that all the the poopies go down right the gray tank is kind of like the kitchen sink water you know in the sink water and the shower water and then we have a white tank which is our water supply when we do not have a water hookup. We have the, the fresh water connection right here. Now this is for winterizing it, so we don't use that. This little switch right here is pretty neat. It's a little night light, that's all it is. So if you arrive at the campsite late, you don't really need a flashlight to be able to hook this stuff up. You can just turn this little light night light on. Uh, and that's it. So if we're hooked up to the city water, we leave the switch in the down position, and if we want to fill up the tank, uh, to use for such things as as boondocking and I'm learning that boondocking is camping where there are no hookups and stuff no water hookups no electrical hookups which we're capable of doing because we've got the generator and we can fill the tank here with fresh water which we won't do unless we plan on boondocking because of the weight anyway that's that connection now you this one right up here is for when we hit the dump station uh, we're able to hook up that black hose that I showed you to this and flush up all the stuff out of the black tank so uh, it works very well this right here is just part of our um, tankless water system we opted to have this mesh covering put on because apparently wasps love to go in there and especially around here mud daubers they like to go in there and build their uh, stuff which clogs it up and then shuts it down which we don't want happening here's the gas fill this uh, leads to the 35 gallon tank which shares uh, the use with the with the generator and the gas filling station so we can use that 35 gallons to fill up our toy or we can use it to run our generator or both and although it's the 2513 model this is one of the things that confused us when we first got it uh, is the guy on the phone kept addressing it as the the PLA 700 and I kept calling it the game changer what it used to be called the model number is actually the 2513. And there you go, this is where we got it. We, we special ordered it from atctrailers.com. But our dealer is Bob Hurley RV of Tulsa, Oklahoma, who so far I can highly recommend. They've been really good to us and very, very efficient. And when we got up there, they uh, really made us feel like we were welcome and at, at home. So we, we hope we found a new home for our RV stuff. On this side, this is the curb side of the uh, trailer, and this is also the entry point to the trailer. I just wanted to point out a couple of things that are here. So we have this little bracket right here, and this is for the TV. We can take the TV off the wall in there and put it in and mount it right on here. There's a little mount on the back of the TV. And right here is a little cable uh, thing that we can use, should we use cable, but we opted for the smart TV. Uh, we also have internet via the Starlink system, which we'll be showing you when we're camping. We just got it. We haven't even used it yet, but we're going to Arkansas in about a week and a half. And we're gonna take it with us, but we're also gonna take you with us with this camera so you can see how that Starlink system works with the TV and, and the internet and whatnot. Uh, another very convenient feature are these uh, electrical hookups on the outside right here by the door. Uh, we've only gone on two trips so far, but we've used those out exterior both times because my wife uses ninja uh, grills to cook with and we bring those along with us and she hooks them right into there it works perfect uh, other than that we've got the awning up here 
we opted to have the awning only on this side because we were, we were like, why would we have it on the other side? Why would we have it up next to where the sewer is and all that stuff? The reason that people do that is because they can lower it and it shades the, the RV uh, slightly and it, it helps keep it cool. But this month in Oklahoma, it's been in the hundreds. In fact, it's been up to 107. When we went to Black Mesa, it was 105 degrees for three days solid. And the air conditioner kept us cool somewhat. Uh, it was working really hard. You wouldn't expect it to. So we're already looking into maybe having a second AC unit installed. There is a spot above the bedroom where we could install a second one. The one that we do have installed is in the garage slash kitchen area, which we're gonna show you in just a couple of minutes. It's daytime, otherwise I would show you the lighting that we have for this thing. There's a strip lighting all along the top and that's called the awning lighting. And then these two lights right here are called the, I don't know why, they call it the scene lighting. They're just white LEDs, but they, bright, they brighten up the whole area over here. And uh, if you turn them on at night, you can really, uh, you kind of irritate some of your neighbors a little bit. They are that bright. So we try not to use those as much as possible. Uh, the other lighting exterior that we have here uh, are the cargo area lighting. And these light up, uh, those three at the top and these uh, ones on the side light this whole area back up. Uh, very brightly, I might add. So, KH is waiting on the inside of the RV right now. So let's go in and hand the camera over to her so she can show you kind of the configuration that we have set up right now and some of the storage that comes along with this stuff. Hey, KH, I'm bringing the camera in to you so you can talk about some of the stuff on the inside. Okay. And then finally, after you're done showing them around the inside, I'm going to show them some of the stuff like this control panel up here that controls everything and where all the fuses and everything else is for this thing. And, okay. You know, some of the stuff that I found out. You want to go ahead and pull the happy jack down, the couch anyway? Sure. We can pull them back both down. The first thing we wanted to show you is the happy jack system. So here it is. The happy jack is actually the bed above the two couches that you see there at the bottom. So we can control that via this control panel over here uh, easily. So it's a push of the button deal. And it comes right down. You'll see? notice the happy jack bed stops there about halfway down. That's by design. So there's enough room for people to either sleep on the, the couches the way they're configured right now. Uh, or we can fold those up into actual couches, which we love, and we're going to show you that in just a second. So they fold up like this, and the legs go down if you were to sit on it. It also has, they have cup holders there. This bed would be all the way at the top when we're just utilizing the couches. So we can actually lift the happy jack back up until people are ready to sleep in it, or we can leave it in the lower position, right? So this would be the configuration at night. If yes. somebody was getting ready to go to bed, they could get up there and go to bed. Mm -hmm. And we still have seating at the bottom for yes. those of us that aren't ready to go to bed. And I fit perfectly under there because I'm short. Dylan, on the other hand, had to duck his head. <laughs> So, as you can see, this is the garage area. It has large windows with blackout shades. When you pull the shades down, you can't see any light whatsoever. And we've got these lights up here. ATC's really thought of everything. So if you're in the top bunk sleeping, you've got uh, USB ports and you've got the uh, plugs for all of your electronic devices. Same thing over here for the couch. You know, if you're sleeping on the couch bed, then uh, you'd use those to plug in your necessary items. We have a cook, cook stove here, cooktop. It uh, runs off of the propane and it has all the lighting instructions right in here. We also have a convection slash microwave 
and this is this is really nice you can roast and bake and all kinds of things in here and the instructions are right there they make it super easy and then you've got all these buttons now down here we have storage for things like uh, your garbage bags and um, Reynolds wrap things like that and then we've got all of these drawers here this is got a pretty a lot of pretty good storage and then this has this is a sink it's got a pull out doesn't pull out too far but you can spray back in here this sink is very large this is a drawing rack and here we have a cutting board. You can use the other side of it to as a cutting board. See how large this sink is? I love this stereo. It has awesome speakers. We need to figure out how to turn the speakers off outside so we can listen to the music inside. I'm not very technical, y'all, so uh, I've been reading about it, but... I haven't tried it out because we have neighbors next door and they're not very friendly. Got all this storage up here. See, this is where I've got my bowls and dishes and stuff. So this pulls out and it's a nice little clipping system. It, when you close it, it, it won't open unless you use this to open it so everything stays really secure up there these are very nice cabinets um, I've got my pots and pans up here we've got some is that a is that your tool case? that's my air compressor oh, the air compressors up there and then we've got additional storage um, for anything else that we might need for those of y'all that love to cook and love to eat <laughs> We have a freezer here. I bought ice trays and the mistake I made was filling the ice trays up before we left the campground because the Bumpy Roads did this to my freezer. I have to defrost it. Here is the refrigerator. It's a huge refrigerator. It has all kinds of storage. And then of course it's got your trays here on the door. And we have a wonderful TV, which Ben ordered Starlink, correct? Uh, Starlink for the internet. Yes. And to power our internet, which we use internet TV. Yes, we use internet TV. So uh, these chairs, you want to show them? It lays down, so it's nice and comfortable. See? We almost fell asleep in these chairs one night, didn't we? Yes, we did. <laughs> I've already turned the lights on in here. This is the bathroom. Has a nice ceiling fan. At some point, I believe we have to get ceiling covers with as hot as it was in August here. So uh, we have a porcelain toilet. This system here, it pulls out the rate. So it provides you with a lot of space see and there's a shower with a touch system so you can pause the water while you soap up and you don't have to use all the hot water we have hot water on demand so it's got a nice little shelf here and there look at this big area here and then when you're traveling when you're done taking a shower you just push these back in This system is very awesome. I love it. Got storage up here. All kinds of storage. Of course, I'd have to get my step stool if I put anything in there. Got a medicine cabinet with mirrors. Sink. We've got hooks for towels. The towel rack. The toilet paper roll. And then, of course, we have storage all down here. This is where I keep the towels and things. So, this is the uh, remote to open up 
that system, the venting system. Of course, we have been put all kinds of scents in here, so we don't have to smell nastiness. And then, of course, you've got a great big mirror here. Here is the bedroom. This is amazing. This bed is so comfortable. We have cabinet storage here. We've got outlets and uh, USB plugs here. We've got all of this cabinet storage up here. And then above, that's where I keep extra pillows for guests staying. These lights are a push button light. So you can push it on once for just the night light, or you can have the reading light and then push it again to turn it off. So we have a closet here. It's a pretty good sized closet. It's got hanging space. And then we put our laundry basket in there. The other side is the same. Got storage on both sides. And then I wanted to show you this. It's under the bed storage. This is our ladder for our uh, patio system that goes on our deck. And then we've got the cup holders and things like that. And I've got my outdoor ninja grill and then I've got my indoor. I love those ninja foodies and ninja grills. So, so I'm just going to go over a couple of more things about this uh, ATC trailer 2513 model. Uh, it's by all means not everything. We're going to be doing a bunch of these videos, so if you keep watching, you'll learn more and more about this uh, particular trailer and how we have it configured. Let me start off at the back. Uh, we opted to have the airline tracking system installed, and this means that we can move furniture just about anywhere. We can move that table back here if we wanted to put it back here. We could move these couches somewhere else. We could put them along this wall here if that's the way we wanted. This is the way we opted to have it configured. We wanted these couches down here so we could have guests back here when our toy's not in the, the garage. Now you may be saying to yourself, that's a pretty small little garage area. Are you sure you're gonna be able to fit your toy in here? We've got the Razor Trail S and it'll fit perfectly in here. If we push it in, if we pull it in with the wheels forward like this, uh, the wheels will be uh, right next to the microwave right there, the front two wheels will be up next to the microwave and the, re the rest of the razor will be back here towards the loading door. Uh, but, very, very uh, wide. There's plenty of space. Uh, you can see that these little vents are all over the place. These are air conditioned vents, uh, which are coming in pretty handy, but it is August here in Oklahoma, so it's super hot. What we would do with this air conditioner up here, this is the main unit in the kitchen. We would close this vent here, and that forces the air into the venting system. So they'd be coming out this vent down here. They'd be coming up that vent right up by the Happy Jack bed that you can barely see. They'd be coming out this vent here. Uh, this is a speaker. My wife mentioned that these are very nice speakers, and they do produce a lovely sound, I tell you. Uh, but the rest of the vents in this thing operating off that one air conditioner you can see right below the shower there There's a vent uh, There's a vent above the shower And then in the bath or in the bedroom, we've got two vents. We've got one there and one there so I was mentioning the uh, aircraft tracking or uh, tie down system and it's underneath this mat here so when we do put the toy in here, this mat will uh, come out and we will put the toy in here and then tie it down via these tie down uh, locations. And they run the whole length of the toy hauler. The, ent the entire RV uh, is made of aluminum and composite. There is no wood in the construction of this RV anywhere. So we will never have any problems uh, with wood. There will be no mildewing problems. There will be no more no swelling problems, right, with the cheap board that they put in some RVs. Yes. This is aluminum construction. Uh, this and, thing will be here long after we are and gone. Because, <laughs> and because it's aluminum, we can, we can literally take a hose and hose the whole thing out and not have to worry about any kind of terrible uh, rotting of the woods. Yes. So my wife had mentioned the cabinet. She loves the storage. 
The thing I like about these things is the construction. They're straight and true. They're not flimsy uh, and they lock solid, right? Uh, this is a quality, quality build. I'm telling you, ATC makes a quality trailer. We got plenty of storage in the kitchen my wife went over. Uh, I wanted to go over some of the more technical stuff. So let's start with the fuse box area. This is where we can find all of our fuses, right? All of the fuses are up there. And then we also have some breakers down here, breaker systems uh, for the bigger, for the bigger uh, power uh, stuff. So this is where we go to reset everything. This right here operates our tankless water heater. It controls it, I should say. We have a 12 volt disconnect inside the trailer as well as outside the trailer. Uh, should we need it? This is the part that I love, right? I'm a kind of a technical guy. I'm not very good at it, but I like technical stuff. So uh, you can control everything in, in here. This is the home screen, and it shows you your fresh water tank capacity or your fill level, which is at 0% right now. We've got no water in it. Our gray tank, uh, we're not going to the bathroom in here, or uh, should I say using the shower or the sink in here because we're at home right now and the black tank uh, as I've explained outside is for the poopies and the peepees right and that tells you how full that's getting uh, the generator it says generator that's actually the gas so there's 25 percent gas in the tank it's a 35 gallon tank and as I said that tank shares uh, with the fueling system so we can use our fueling system to fuel up our toy or we can use it for the generator in any event this is where we see where our fuel level at is at and it's at 25 percent right now uh, there's a water pump that's for when we're boondocking we have the fresh water uh, filled in the tanks here this gas water heater that's our tankless uh, water heater and that's what uh, heats the water we had that confused with tank heater the tank heater is a 12 volt system that's in all three of the tanks, the fresh gray and the black tanks, and all that does is provide enough heat to where they don't freeze when it get when it drops down to freezing condition. This is the uh, this just gives an overview of the temperature right now. It's 83 degrees uh, where KH is sitting right there. Off to the right here, you can see uh, the battery is at 100 percent. We've got an ion lithium battery in here. Uh, that works really well. Now we opted for the lowest of the, uh, the solar packages, so we only have the the one battery. I think it is in there. It's an expensive thing, and I'll tell you, it works really well. Uh, the, we drove up to Black Mesa from our little town here in Tuttle, Oklahoma, and it took us about six and a half hours to get there. And we did stop a couple of times, but the battery the whole time was keeping the refrigerator nice and cold. In fact, uh, when we got up there, we still had about 26% capacity on the battery. The refrigerator was cold. And when we plugged it in, it immediately started charging that battery. And within about 30 minutes, it was back to 100%. So, uh, would I opt for the bigger package? Right now, I can say no. Uh, give us a couple camping trips, and I'll let you know for sure. Uh, just keep watching the channel. And we're going to be updating this RV uh, every video that we put out. There'll be something new on this RV, I promise. All right, so like I was saying, uh, it's got a really cool control system. This is right here. This is your battery. This tells you everything you need to know about your battery and whether it's pass-through or it's under the inversion. Uh, I can start the generator or I can stop it from inside. I can also do that outside. Now... This is the lighting master control panel. I can turn everything off, right, inside and outside, exterior master off, light master off or on, or I can do it via individual. If they're blue, that means they're on. So KH has got every light in the whole thing on right now. So I just turn them all off, or I can turn them all on with the light master switch. That's really convenient. The exterior thing I was explaining to you, the, the curbside awning, uh, lighting is that strip lighting out there and then this is the curbside scene that's those two LED lights that I was showing you and then the loading dock uh, is the lights in the back and the same thing on the right side if we had opted for the awning on the right side we would have had that we do have the roadside scene though so we can light up both sides of this trailer uh, or turn them all off at the same time or turn them all on uh, uh, 
with the light master here at the same time. So that's that. And then the climate control is just basically uh, your air conditioner units. We have one unit right now. We're thinking about getting a second one installed. And if we did have the second one installed, then there would be another panel up here showing kitchen and bedroom. This one right here controls the awning outside with these buttons, the extension or the extend and retract buttons, and the bed lift that KH showed you back here while I was operating. I was touching these buttons to, to raise it and lower it. And then finally, we're into the settings mode. Uh, if you have any uh, issues or anything, the network diagnostics real good. It tells you everything that's going on with the system, the screen brightness you can adjust. You can change the color and stuff, and this is where you would adjust your time. It's 3.09 p.m. in Tuttle, Oklahoma at the moment, at the time of this recording. So this is the Logitech, uh, the Logic Controller version 1.1a. And I really love this system because this thing does everything in the whole trailer that you need it to do. Now, it also has individual switches that you can use just like in a house. You can use it via the, just a push, it's just a push button system, right? So I can turn the ceiling hall or the ceiling lights on and off or the hall lights on and off with the touch of a button. Uh, some of the really cool trim features on this thing is this little ATC plate that goes over the door. Uh, we didn't even notice that until the first time we took it out and uh, it's just a neat feature. Little touches like that throughout this trailer make this thing unique I think and I love it. So, so down here is just an access panel to some of the interesting stuff like this is where all your water hookups are this is where you flush the septic and all that stuff from the outside there of course but this is where you would come if there were any problems right this is where it is and this is our tankless water system right here that's behind that panel now both sides of the bed I'm sure she showed you but both sides of the bed have electrical hookups and USB hookups so USB hookups, electrical hookups, both sides. Both sides have a, a little, well, it's not really that little. It's pretty deep. They're a little thin, but very deep. And plenty of storage in the side pockets for other stuff. Like we keep our coffee maker in this one and we keep some extra bedding in the top of here. Mostly our clothes will go in there or underneath this. So uh, I have my fan hooked up on this side to my electrical thing and then I'll plug my phone in there at night to charge it. It's very comfortable. I'm sure she mentioned the bed. Now this second TV in the bedroom is an option uh, you have to pay for extra. It doesn't come standard with this TV. It does come standard with the TV in the kitchen. This is the same exact smart TV that's in the kitchen and it's got a great picture I must say. It was a little difficult hooking up because I am technologically challenged but we finally figured it out and we finally figured out we were having problems because the internet that we were trying to use to do so was terrible. So, like I said, there's our light switch in here, or we could use that main control panel if we so desired. But it also has a hall light here switch. So if you're getting up to use the bathroom, you can flick it off there. So that's pretty cool. There's our remote control for our uh, bedroom. We have one in the bathroom as well for that vent that I was talking about. So I think that's uh, everything that we wanted to show you about the trailer for now. Obviously, we've got a lot more to talk about about this thing. I did want to run by a couple of things we did mention the fact that anytime you buy an RV, you're going to have some issues. I think that, that goes for any brand. Uh, the issues that we're having with this one, most, most of them are minor. We do have one issue that we're dealing with right now. We opted uh, for the railing system at the back here. There's a railing. So when this loading door goes down, you can stop it halfway and basically make it into a porch, right? And we have a railing that fastens, you see these these brackets right here the, the railing will go down on this and it surrounds the whole back porch basically and it makes a little patio we got it for our dogs we got it for our dogs uh, so we could take our dogs with us and uh, they could come and go out onto the back patio uh, unfortunately it's in this particular model and you can't get these couches with this configuration anymore because there's an issue with this bracket right here of the couch hitting the railing when it drops. So you can't lower the couches all the way. And because you can't lower the couches all the way means you can't lower the happy jack bed all the way. 
you notice that we've removed the railing because KH and I are getting ready to go to Arkansas on our next trip. So we're gonna have the we're gonna have the toy in here, and we're gonna want to have uh, the railing out to make things e to make things easier for us. So that's the main problem that we have. Everybody uh, that we've seen that has bought one of these ATC trailers, one of the comments that they make is they're super happy uh, with the follow through, right? If they have an issue, ATC is all over it and addressing it right away and getting it, getting it solved. So we have that issue with our gate back there, ATC's uh, on the job. We can definitely recommend Bob Hurley RV out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, yes. if you want to buy an RV, right? Yes. We are going to be some of the people that will be writing a five-star review for them in the near future. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the walk around of our new ATC 2513 bumper pull trailer. We absolutely are loving it right now, and we can't wait to show you more. We're even going to be doing videos on us going on that razor in the trail, so that ought to be good, right? Yes. Love each other. Let's go camping, and peace. See you next time. Bye, y'all.